In India, the prevalence of COVID-19 in black fungus infections has increased. What's the black fungus? Why is it associated with COVID? Why is it occurring in India? How is it diagnosed and treated? And how do you prevent it? That's what this video is about. So welcome to another video. If you're new here, my name is Mike Hansen. I'm a board certified physician specializing in internal medicine, pulmonary disease, and critical care medicine. And if you like learning about health and medicine, this is the channel to click on that subscribe button and bell notification. Okay, what is the black fungus among us? Black fungus is mucormycosis, a rare but dangerous infection. It's caused by a group of molds known as mucormycetes. These fungi can be found in decaying leaves, compost piles, and rotten wood. Molds require moisture and decaying organic material in order to thrive. Mucormycetes release large numbers of spores that can go into the air. Infections occur more frequently in the summer and fall compared to the winter and spring. People can inhale these fungal spores when they're near moist, dead vegetation. Small, hair-like structures called cilia can catch these spores in your airways and get into your lungs. They can also get trapped in your mouth, nose, and sinuses. You can also swallow them, in which case these spores are harmless and pass through your digestive system. The immune system cleans up any leftover spores. Now for most people, the vast majority of people, getting these spores in their body is no big deal. Forget about it. But black fungus has an advantage in people who have a weak immune system. If your immune system is weak or your cilia for some reason don't work well, for example, with certain genetic conditions, it's easier for the spores to get deep into the sinuses and other body tissues. Once this happens, it's harder for your immune system to dispose of them. Besides entering your body through your mouth, nose, and sinuses, the fungus can also enter through a break in your skin, such as a cut or a scrape. The types of mucormycosis infections depend on where they enter your body. So rhinocerebral mucormycosis is an infection of the sinuses that can occur when a person with a weakened immune system breathes in those fungal spores. Air enters the nose and may go into the sinuses, which are air chambers found in the facial bones. Sinuses are air pockets that serve to lighten the skull, provide resonance for speech, and moisturize and warm the air that we breathe. The infection can spread from the sinuses to the brain or the eyes. People with diabetes who have poorly controlled blood sugar are more likely to develop a black fungal infection of the sinuses. Same for those who've had a kidney transplant. Lung mucormycosis is most common in those with a very weakened immune system after having cancer treatment or an organ transplant. Skin mucormycosis develops when the fungus enters the skin through a scrape or cut in the skin, and this is the most common type of black fungus infection in people who have a healthy immune system. Disseminated mucormycosis occurs when the infection spreads throughout the body via the bloodstream. The fungus invades the blood vessels, reducing blood flow to organs and tissues supplied by these damaged blood vessels. Now, when that blood flow is decreased, the tissues can't get enough oxygen and nutrients, and then they start to die. Dying tissue turns black. Black fungus grows well on dying tissue. After passing through the blood, the fungus usually affects the brain, but it can also affect the spleen, heart, and skin. An opportunistic infection takes advantage of you when your immune system is weak. We use steroids like dexamethasone, aka Decadron, to treat sicker people with COVID-19. When COVID-19 gets into the lungs, meaning COVID pneumonia, the immune system is stirring up this crazy amount of inflammation there, which can do a lot of damage. So we try to minimize that inflammation with steroids. Sometimes, for very severe COVID pneumonia, we also give a drug called tocilizumab, which also makes the immune system weaker. Unfortunately, this can lead to black fungus infection, not just because it suppresses the immune system, but also because steroids increase blood sugar levels. And fungal infections love sugar. Sugar is their go-to for nutrition. People with uncontrolled diabetes have higher blood sugar levels, which helps the fungus grow and flourish. Diabetes is extremely common in India. It's actually estimated that 15% of adults in India's urban areas have it. 
So why is this black fungus outbreak mainly happening in India? Well, one reason is related to the swelling number of COVID cases, in addition to the liberal use of steroids there. But there are likely other factors as well. Sometimes there are mucormycosis outbreaks in hospital settings. These outbreaks have been linked to adhesive bandages, wooden tongue depressors, hospital linens, negative pressure rooms, water leaks, poor air filtration, non-sterile medical devices, building construction, but also oxygen face masks and humidifiers help people with COVID-19 breathe easier and they deliver oxygen to their lungs. These devices can make it easier for the black fungus to invade the sinuses and cause infection. The majority of infected people have diabetes and have recently recovered from COVID-19. So according to recent reports, 85% of people with mucormycosis also have diabetes. Of the 222 initially diagnosed, 212 were COVID-19 positive, 29 were not given steroids, 12 were considered to be immunocompromised, and 21 had another medical condition. The symptoms of mucormycosis depend on where the fungus is growing in your body. The most common site of infection in patients recovering from COVID is the sinuses and the brain. The symptoms would then be similar to those of a sinus infection, so facial swelling on one side of the face, headache, nose or sinus congestion, black sores on the bridge of the nose or the roof of the mouth, and fever. So the black sores are a feature of black fungus and are not usually found in more typical bacterial and viral sinus infections. As the infection gets worse, these symptoms can progress to blood-tinged, runny nose, bulging eye, difficulty fully closing the eyelid, difficulty moving the eye, visual problems, and black pus draining from the eyes. When the infection involves the skin, there are blisters or ulcers that may eventually turn black. You may also experience pain, warmth, redness, and swelling around that area of infection. These are signs of inflammation which indicate that your immune system is fighting the infection. As a skin infection worsens and progresses, the affected area swells and becomes hard and painful to the touch. It may begin draining pus, form a walled-off infection known as an abscess, or develop blackened areas from dying skin tissue. Symptoms of a lung infection this would include fever, cough, chest pain, shortness of breath. And since mucormycosis is caused by fungal spores in the environment, it's not contagious. It does not spread from person to person or from animal to person. If you have typical black fungus symptoms, your doctor may take a sample of fluid from your nose or your throat and then send it to a lab to be tested. They may also do a tissue biopsy, which means taking a small piece of tissue and then looking at it underneath the microscope. If your infection is in your nose or your sinuses, a doctor may use a tube with a light and a camera to look inside your nose and sinuses. Blackened or dead looking tissue makes it more likely that the black fungus is the culprit. So your doctor may also do a CAT scan or an MRI or both to take pictures of your head and sinuses. CT or MRI scans can help find out whether the infection has spread to your brain or other organs. Although rare black fungus is a serious infection, the sooner you detect it and treat it, the better the outcome. Antifungal medication can stop the fungus from dividing and spreading. In India, doctors are treating the infection with an IV drug called amphotericin B. Now, this medication has lots of potential for side effects, and there's an inside joke in the medical community that it's called amphoterrible. Treatment can take several weeks. So black fungus thrives on dead and dying tissue. In severe cases, as the infection worsens and the tissue dies, it will become black and necrotic. In this case, doctors will surgically remove this tissue to keep the infection from spreading. Some people with severe infections have had parts of their face, jaw, or eyes removed. Untreated, the death rate from mucormycosis is estimated to be 54%. The death rate from the fungus will depend on how healthy the person is, but also whether they have other medical conditions, the type of fungus, and the area of the body that's infected. Also, if their blood sugars are controlled or not. So if you have COVID, what can you do to prevent getting mucormycosis? For one, make sure your blood sugars are well controlled. 
Two, only take steroid medications if properly recommended by a doctor. Three, if you're wearing a mask, make sure it's a fresh, clean mask. And four, this includes CPAP masks or BiPAP masks. Make sure that you clean them properly and frequently. So that's all for this video. Thank you for watching, and I'll be coming out with another one. It's going to be a big one, and it's going to be a controversial one on the origin of COVID. So make sure you stay tuned for that.